Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 3 Minute Buyer News. My name is Juri Huang and I will be delivering some of Korea's hottest biotech issues today for you in 3 minutes. Korea has an environment where any selected medical center can be examined quickly with the coronavirus diagnostic kit. Through March 8, a total of 196,000 tests were conducted, with the average of nearly 6,000 tests being conducted per day. One of the reasons why so many tests were possible is due to the Korean Diagnostic Kit Companies. The KCDC, short for Korea Center for Disease Control, approved for emergency use of the Diagnostic Kit until March 8, with a total of four companies, Seijin, Solgent, Kojin Biotech, and SD Biosensor. These companies' diagnostic kits can test for COVID-19 infections in about two to six hours. The first diagnostic kit approved for emergency used is Cogen Biotech's PowerCheck. This kit is known to significantly reduce diagnosis time from 24 hours to six hours. So far, 75,000 doses of regents produced by Cogen Biotech have been supplied to more than 50 Korean medical institutions. Another approved kit is Seijin's Alplex, known to be accurate enough to detect all the unique genes of coronavirus, and the test time is shorter than four hours. In particular, Seijin created the appropriate diagnostic kit for COVID-19 in two weeks using the virus's gene sequence and related data released in Germany in this year's January. Solgent and SD Biosensor, which operated an emergency production system with a daily capacity of 15,000 to 20,000 tests, also received emergency approval recently. The two companies' diagnostic kits say they can check the results within two hours of sampling and analysis from suspected patients. Recently, a molecular diagnostic company, Adam Biosystems, said it has completed the development of an electronic diagnosis kit that can be diagnosed in about 50 minutes using gene amplifiers. Director of KCDC Chong Eun Kyung said in a recent briefing that she is considering using a diagnostic kit that can confirm the diagnosis within a faster time than the existing method. Unfortunately, we have just heard the news that the AACR American Association for Cancer Research has been rescheduled. However, due to the significance of the event to Korean pharmaceutical bio companies, we have decided to share the news about what was expected by the Korean bio companies and how they were preparing for the event behind the scene. The AACR, which was to be held in San Diego from April 24th to 29th, is an event attended by more than 20,000 researchers annually and is considered an opportunity to promote corporate research results on the global stage. Industries are paying keen attention to whether the atmosphere of Korea's pharmaceutical biomarket, which has been depressed due to a series of clinical failures and the aftermath of COVID-19, will be able to turn the AACR around. This year's event will introduce a variety of attempts, including pathogen treatment and double antibody technology to promote the effectiveness of immunocancer drugs with a low response rate of around 20%. Like last year, many companies are focusing on dual antibodies, CAR-T, immunosuppressants, and military use. And domestic companies are also confirming announcements of key pipelines that reflect trends. ABL Bio, which is the first Korean company to disclose clinical results in the field of double antibody drugs, will disclose the result of full-time studies of the double antibody immunocancer drugs, ABL-503, and ABL-111, which are co-researching with China's IMEP Biopharma. Yuhan Corporation, which received a technology transfer from ABL Bio, also announced the results of its full-time immunocancer drug transfer using a dual antibody platform. For immunocancer medicine, Genexine announces the interim results of the clinical trial of GX188E and Keytruda for cervical cancer treatment. Anzikim Life Sciences will also present two studies on immunocancer drugs and anti-cancer-induced oral mucosa in new drug EC18. Other announcements include Chunggundang Health, GI Innovation, Utilex, Tubisoft, Hami Pharmaceutical, and Youngjin Pharmaceutical. 
Meanwhile, GBI research predicts that the global market for immunocancer drugs will grow at an annual average of 23.9% to $75.8 billion in 2022. The market for double antibody drugs is also expected to grow at an annual rate of 34% and grow at a steep rate of $9.3 billion by 2030. For the first time since its foundation, Tungendang Health, Celtrion, and Celtrion Healthcare have joined the Korean pharmaceutical and bio company sales of the One Trillion Club. The pharmaceutical and bio companies whose sales exceeded one trillion won last year include Yuhan Corporation, JC Green Cross, Colmar Korea, Hami Pharmaceutical, Taeyong Pharmaceutical. Chunggundang Health and Celtrion. In addition, nine companies including Kwangdong Pharmaceutical and Celtrion Healthcare have been listed on the One Trillion Club as their annual sales topped One Trillion One. The companies to observe are Chunggundang Health and Celtrion. The two companies joined the pharmaceutical and bio industry sales One Trillion Club for the first time since they were founded in 2019. Chunggundang Health recorded 1.8 trillion won in sales last year, up 12.9% from a year earlier, surpassing the threshold of the One Trillion Club for the first time since its inception. Last year's operating profit fell 1.3% from the previous year to 77 billion won, leaving some regrets in terms of profitability, but it seems to have fallen slightly due to increased research and development costs. According to an analysis, Celtrion wants to join the One Trillion Club from year 2017. However, in 2017 and 18, they have failed to meet the One Trillion Club's threshold. As of 2019, Celtrion was able to join the pharmaceutical and bio industries One Trillion Club with sales of 1.1 trillion won, the first since its foundation in 1991 and the largest since its inception. This is attributed to the launch of Ramsama SC in Europe and the U.S. launch of Truxama in Herzoma. Following last year, Yuhan Corporation, GC Green Cross, Hami Pharmaceutical, Colmar Korea, and Taeyong Pharmaceutical have maintained their club status in the One Trillion Club. Experts say that Korea's pharmaceutical and bio industry is becoming global by breaking away from domestic demand in 2019 when the number of club members increased. Well, that's it for today's briefing. Thank you for tuning in again, and we hope to see you on our very next episode. Have a great day ahead.